Hey! Hey, I'm Marcus Tendler, and this is SEO in 2023, Additional Insights. Uh, thanks so much for having me on your show, David. Oh, thanks so much for um, coming on, Marcus. Um, well, it sounds like you're just about to fire away, but I'll just ask you the question anyway. What's your additional insight for SEO in 2023? So my number one SEO tip for 2023 is to regularly check your most important SERP snippets. I know this sounds super basic, but never underestimate the basics when it comes to SEO. We all know Google is rewriting page titles more and more. A recent study showed Google rewriting page titles more than 60% of the time. So it's becoming more important to really be on top of what your SERP snippets look like. So what I like to do is to take my most important keywords, which account for, let's say, more than 70% of all my clicks, and then manually check all of those to see if Google is displaying the correct title and description. And even more, what are the snippet of my competitors and does my snippet really stand out? To do this at scale, there are multiple tools you can use. For example, I really like uh, this handy little Chrome plugin from a German SEO, Stefan Zusch. It's called SERP Snippet Scraper. So you just go to Google and search for one of your keywords. Then just activate the plugin, which will copy the snippet to the clipboard and then open up Google Sheets or Excel and paste it into the spreadsheet. You now have all the snippets of the entire top 10. So you can now not only see if Google is using your title and description, but also the whole top 10. So you can maybe find a more suitable snippet that really stands out from the competition. I also like to save these reports so I can check back at a later time to see how my competition has changed their snippet or if a search intent shift has occurred if I see new snippets targeting a different intent all of a sudden. And checking your most important keywords manually, although it might take quite a bit of time, really has lots of benefits. You'll additionally see stuff like what kind of SERP features are being shown. If you, for example, see map results, aim for getting into that box as well. Is Google showing rich snippet? Which of my competitors is using star rating rich snippets or FAQ page schema for extended SERP real estate. There are multiple ways to create a much better snippet with the help of structured data. What's the main intent of the query? Or is there maybe a mixed intent when people search for this query? Has there been a search, uh, search intent shift recently? I really like the concept of happiness in three Google is using. So by looking at the first three results, and or universal search features, Google is showing, the first three results Google is showing, you can easily derive the main intent and or if there's a different, uh, and if there are different intents. So going back to what you originally said, actually, you originally said that uh, Google was changing about 60% of page titles. Is it possible to get, to force Google to make it more likely to use your page title? Uh, in, in, in a way, yes. I mean, like, obviously, the, the most titles that Google is changing are actually too short or way too long titles where you have maybe your brand in there twice. I mean, like, these are, like, the basics, obviously, that you always should avoid. But sometimes it's always... Um, it's also the nature of the query, um, which basically dictates how the SERP snippet is going to look like. So if I'm searching for a specific keyword combination and this is not um, included in my meta description because I may be targeting a different keyword, the main keyword, so to speak, and this is like a secondary keyword um, where the page is also ranking for, but it's not mentioned in the meta description. Google will not use the meta description, but rather use something out of the content, like a text fragment from the content to display um, as the description. Um, and, but here you you can also do something because you can, I mean, like, obviously you could go back, change the meta description to also include this keyword combination, but this might not be such a good idea because you're targeting a different keyword. And if you're also ranking really well there, you don't want to jeopardize this good ranking by changing the meta description for this uh, secondary keyword. But you can actually look at what, what text fragment Google is using for the description and just go into your content and actually change that text fragment, like gradually. I mean, like you don't want to change the whole thing, but gradually change it and Google will pick up on these changes. And so you can also change your snippet um, by changing the text fragment on the page. So how often should you actually be measuring um, what's appearing for your snippets? Oh, so I'm doing this like every month uh, and I would do it even more often if it, it wouldn't be 
yeah, such a lot of work, right? But I think a month is a, is a very good time frame here to do actually do this. And I'm not just like also to ensure yourself everything is uh, like going correctly, but I really want to have a good feeling for my most important SERPs. I just want to see what changes. Are there new universal search integrations um, there all of a sudden? Or like, like, for example, video results. All of a sudden video results are also shown there. And I'm like, okay, that's another opportunity for me. I also need a video result um, that I can actually put in there, right? So it's not longer for an SEO about, you know, getting to number one. But if I can have 10, um, 10, better be 10 links to my property in the top 10 due to the various universal search integrations, that's that's awesome, right? So I would also always aim to get in uh, as many of these universal search integrations that are shown as well to just gain more SERP real estate. So, so um, should you be keeping historical records of your snippets and then comparing that data with your search console data and seeing what has the the best impact in terms of things like click-through rates? Absolutely, definitely. Um, and even in this case, I would actually do a more sophisticated approach. Actually, I do this with Write, yay. Uh, we do A-B testing and you can also do this in the past, right? So you, I can also go um, in the past and actually look at when I actually changed something and uh, and compare these time periods and actually can see if there's been impact on the CTR due to my, um, due, 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 due to the SERP snippet change. So I think it's, 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 it's vital to save these results to really see, you know, where do I make an impact? Is there like a, a change that I did was it so good that I can also use this specific pattern on other URLs, right? But this is something I would uh, I would test with our A/B testing tool to really see is this new pattern in the title, um, you know, like suitable for um, for more pages. And if if I see this, you know, like been having a positive effect, I'm, I'm just going to roll up the change. And then respectively, I, I'm actually looking at it again, like after months to see how it has developed. Um, if, and it have re uh, held really true, um, my hypothesis, or it, it changed back again, and I have to uh, and I have to do it over again. But I think, like, really, this is what SEO is all about, right? It's not about ranking on number one. It's about people clicking through. And yeah. even if people are clicking through on my result, like 25, uh, 25% of the time, I want to get a 26, I want to get a 28, whatever, because this is, people go onto my site, right? This is what I want. Um, and so I think it's always, it, it always pays off to diligently test um, your snippets and 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 try new stuff, right? And, and you don't even have to do it with your, like really worry about, oh my God, I don't want to change it because I can lose some position. Try it out with PPC, right? Um, so just try different variations. And Google will actually also, you know, like uh, also will, will automatically find the best version, you know, that that yields the best CTR and that you can also use um, in your organic snippets. And if you say, oh, but but that's too expensive because Google, everybody's bidding on these terms, then do it with Bing, right? As a, um, there's... You know, whatever you're saying, there is a way to actually test this and, and get more out of your clicks. And, and this is what I really like because a lot of SEO advice is always about low-hanging fruits and, you know, and this is not working, try to make it work. But I also like the approach of I look at something that works really well and make it even better, right? And so I think this is always a great approach if you have a good SEO site to get more traffic, more qualified traffic, more good traffic to your site. Are there any magical phrases that you can recommend that are quite likely to result in a higher click-through rate? As a, even if I could, it, it would probably be stupid because it's always dependent on yeah on the target audience. I mean, like just the obviously the the the, the topic itself, but also um, what target audience am I marketing towards? Right? Am I marketing towards B two B people? Right? Or or B two C crowd? Right? It's going to be completely different, um, and they're going to react to totally totally different stuff. I mean, like for an e commerce shop, having something like a big discounts and, and stuff like this. Right? This is not really something where uh, in software as a service B two B, it's like um, you know what, what what is you know really um, going to make an impact because I'm I'm leading direct with a discount, right? I got a lead with the value that um, a software as a service actually brings or something like this, right? So um, I think there's not this this one phrase, this, if you, if you include this, this is just going to work. There's no magic bullet here. And also, it also dependent on the, the geolocation you're actually targeting. For example, in Germany, 
What works really well with snippet optimization is ASCII characters, right? So you have these hearts there and the, the telephone and whatever kind of things. And what I actually learned from my, my colleague from the UK, Izzy Smith, was that stuff like this, uh, like with ASCII codes um, in, the, in the URL, in the snippet, is actually holding off people from clicking in the UK because they find it spammy, right? So in Germany, people love it, you know, seeing these ASCII codes and it really entices them to click more. But in the UK, it... It, 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 it looks like a uh, like a, like a, like a spammer um, so it's it's always hard to give this like this bulletproof recommendation but that's it it's not about me uh, or anybody else any other SEO expert um, you know I have so much experience this is what you should do no just test it you know just test it out do a B testing and really see you know what works best for your target audience in your geolocation um, and um, yeah just let the data uh, because data doesn't lie I might yeah and obviously from what you're saying as well don't assume that what works well in one country is going to work well in another country as well. So completely test things differently for each country as well. Um, and also yeah. in relation to obtaining traffic is to get a high click-through rate, you want to get the right traffic as well. Um, so do you also try to measure things like maybe dwell time on a page or actually uh, likelihoods of making a purchase or actually purchases and tie that back to what's included in the snippet? Yeah, that's actually a great way. But uh, I mean, like, obviously, this goes way beyond the snippet, right? I mean, like, for all my informational content, I will always, um, like, determine what is, like, if, if I write, like, a 10,000 uh, character um, informational article, right? Um, so I would assume it takes about four and a half minutes for somebody to read that content, right? And so and now I will actually, um, I have this value, and now we'll go back to Google Analytics and actually look at, like, all the content where there's a big disparity between this is how long you should spend on the page and the actual time on the page. And if I see something like this page, with, which should have four and a half minutes, has an average dwell time of, 20 seconds, you know, and then I go back to Google Search Console and actually see people are just looking for one excerpt for one answer, which is which is in there, but I go way beyond, right? And this is like, oh my God, I'm going way overboard with the thing. This is just too much content for this specific case, right? Uh, I definitely got to do something uh, about this. And so I would always try to tie these together and really see where do people just not consume my content and why is that, right? And how can I make it more prominent or split it apart into multiple parts because it has different intents and Google has really a hard time figuring out, you know, I can't rank you for this intent because it's more informational, but but then it's like on, on the commercial side, it's like... It's doesn't work right so and it's like it doesn't work for both sides and so i'm like okay let's debundle this at the small informational side with the quick uh, info you're getting and then the transaction side where people actually stay longer it's a bad example i'm sorry but um but i really love applying sort of like the the expectation i would have um for people how to interact with the content if, if there's a disparity this is how i can optimize it it's interesting to say that you would expect someone to say stay about four and a half minutes if you had a 10,000 word article on there. And obviously people can't really read that volume of article in that time, but maybe it's consistent with people maybe scanning a little bit more online instead of actually reading a book and spending time reading every single word on the page. Um, so bearing that in mind, would you actually apply that stat to shorter posts? For instance, if you have a post of about a thousand words, would you expect people to spend about 30 seconds on your page? Oh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry for the example that I said four and a half thousand uh, uh, characters or words. In, yeah, in well, 10,000 words for four and a half I minutes, was, I think. I was really just making up numbers. Okay, so okay, I, okay. I, I, no, <laughs> I was like, also struggling with the characters because I wanted to say words. And then right. I'm, I, I'm, okay. yeah, I'm sorry, it's like a bad example. But but I mean, like you could try it out yourself, right? Like really, this is the article and I'm going to read it myself. And this is really what I'm doing because I'm actually reading every article that goes live and right. I'm actually reading myself. I'm still doing this after 10 years. Um, and I really, really like how long does it take it for me, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I might also be scanning something, but it was like, okay, it should be at least one and a half minutes in this this person has interacted with the article, right? And, and if it's really like 20 seconds, I know, okay, I lost him somewhere. He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't even enticed to scan further. He was like, he was stuck in the beginning. Um, oh, look at this. There's a big image slider up there. And he was like immediately appelled by that image slider and never really scrolled down. Maybe he didn't even see that you could scroll down, right? That kind of stuff. So I think this holds a lot of value to really try to match your own expectations on something with data and like really see where, where does this expectation yeah, did, did, where wasn't it met? 
Well, you certainly shared a lot about what SEO should be doing now in 2023, but now let's talk about what SEOs shouldn't be doing. So what's something that's seductive in terms of time, but ultimately counterproductive? What's something that SEOs shouldn't be doing in 2023? Yeah, ditching your content team and solely relying on JetGTP to write your content. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just had to mention this with the JetGDP craze uh, going on at the moment. But is there I a place it, for chat GDP content? Oh, obviously. I mean, you see what Bankrate is doing, right? And I think they yeah. have a, a great best practice, actually. Like, Yeah, oh, yeah. The, this content is generated by AI, exactly, yeah. 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 Super transparent, and this is the guy that fact checked it. This is the editor, uh, right? And so they have multiple people, and they 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 showed very transparent transparently um, what's going on there. And even Google can say anything against it, right? Because this is how it should be done, and and what's not to like, right? You have AI basically creating like a rough outdraft with all the stuff that should be included, which is interesting. And then you have somebody go over this, add the the typical eat stuff, your own expertise, the experience with a certain thing added to this article. Right, and then have another editor review it if it really like if is it really good for the user. What's not to like, right? Google can anything can't say anything against it. So I think it's a great best practice. But there's also a lot of people who don't see this because this still creates a lot of work, and people want to you know ditch work. So they're like, you know, I'm just gonna have it write it and just put it on there. Oh, look, it works. And this is great. You know, in Germany, obviously, it works a little bit better and probably a little bit longer than English content. But still, you know, this is not a sustainable strategy. So um, I think it's a great way to be more productive, but you have to tie it in into, a, your, into, into your content process and not just, yeah, let it, let it run. Just by itself. By itself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Marcus Tandler is a co-founder and chief evangelist at Wright, and you can find him over at Wright.com. That's R-Y-T-E.com. Marcus, thanks so much for adding your additional insight to SEO in 2023. Thank you so much again, David. It's always uh, fun to be here. Thank you so much. I've been your host, David Bain, and you've been listening to SEO in 2023 Additional Insights. A majestic series that complements the original SEO in 2023 podcast, video series, and book. Find out more over at seoin2023.com.